So our talk title this morning, I have just <laughs> flown out my head. I don't even know what it is at the moment. What is it, Juanita? There it is. <laughs> Snuck up behind me. <laughs> In this thing of oneness, think about the word universe. Uni, verse, one verse. And perhaps in the oneness of creation, there's one voice singing one verse, and yet we're all hearing it very differently. <laughs> right? Now, when I was putting this together, that took me to the comical experience that many of us have with secular songs, particularly for some reason, Neil Diamond songs seem to really get a lot of this. Um, I'm pretty sure the lyrics are turn on your heart light, but I've often heard it sung at the top of people's lungs, turn on your headlights. <laughs> so we're hearing the same thing, but not. <laughs> um, it's an interesting phenomenon that happens. Um, I can tell you, oftentimes people will say to me after Sunday service, I'm so glad you said blah, blah, blah. That's exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm like, pretty sure I didn't say that inside my head. And then I go back and watch the recording, and sure enough, didn't come out of here, but that's what they heard. And what they heard was exactly what they needed to hear, the universal voice. And so I think, you know, we can get hung up mentally because we talk so much about the word, right? And more accurately, it's my word capital M, capital W, referring to the word of the infinite, not the words we use in English language. And the word that is creative is the belief that is operating back of the words that come out of our mouth. And you can put, I can tell you this from having been a deputy, a hundred people can witness the exact same event. And when you get witness statements and you look at them in totality, it's like none of them were at the same spot. None of them witnessed the same thing. They're all very different recollections of the exact same physical occurrence. And so this notion that we might all have the same understanding of a word, it almost lends itself to a good comedy routine. And, and there's a whole script for it called a dictionary, right? Because you can look up words in the dictionary and some words have 30 meanings. And isn't it interesting when we speak to one another, how easily we slip into assuming that the listener knows exactly what I mean? Because we, we might have a little bit of human self-centeredness sometimes. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> and then it gets interestinger. That's a southern word. <laughs> that, that's a real word in the south. Life gets interestinger and interestinger. When we ask people... You know, when we admit, I'm not sure what you mean by that, would you clarify that for me? Would you share with me what you mean by that word? How defended we get when someone cares enough to ask us what we actually mean. How many of us hear it as an attack rather than a simple inquiry of curiosity because they actually want to know what you mean. Um, I've told this story before and it's... And Deborah knows I tell it, so it's fine. The first time she told me she loved me, see, it's supposed to be that magical moment. And I, I kind of blew it in human terms 
because I looked at her eye to eye and I said, I have no idea what that means. Now, I, you know, I know in the fairy tales and in the movie scripts, my role was to say, I love you too, and just move on in complete assumption. But I got to tell you, the way I grew up, I love you meant some pretty ugly things because people that said they loved me didn't treat me lovingly. And so when I heard that, it's like, what does that mean to you? <laughs> I need to know. And we navigated through it. Obviously, we've been married for quite a few years. Um, but if we leaned into that, perhaps we're leaning into a different experience of our internal voice. I learned something this past week. I have for years interpreted internal conflict as resistance. And what I learned this week is that most of my resistance is actually desire. But it's a different desire. It's a desire of human thought because our humanity has its own desires that may differ from our spiritual desires. Because we have this organ that lives between our ears called a brain. Now, I want to be really clear. I love my brain. I love it. It's an amazing organ. And it has limitations. Because just like my computer has a hard drive, my body has a hard drive. And it's called my brain. And the only thing that it can draw from is past information. I want you to get that. The brain only knows what has already happened. And so when something spiritually new is calling us, the brain goes into its cycle of searching for information to make it make sense. And when the spiritual calling is new and the brain doesn't have any information, it creates a bit of a conundrum in our human experience. Because now I either have to go backwards to satisfy my brain and find comfort, or I have to step forward into a spirituality that makes my brain uncomfortable. Interestingly enough, because I don't know how the man did it, but Ernest Holmes pretty much addresses everything. I, it just blows my mind. He talks about the conflict of desire. And this is actually in the 1926 version. When an emotion con conflicts with the will and becomes suppressed, it returns to its subjective state, but remains active. It will come up in some other form. <laughs> it will not be put down. It may remain in a subjective state for years, but eventually, unless neutralized, it will manifest. Let one go for years with some unexpressed longing and they will have created such a desire that it will have become irresistible to its inclination towards expression. People often become seething cauldrons within because of inhibited action. Energy must find an outlet. Sometimes the calling of our soul collides with our human stuff. It just does. Um, never, <laughs> never in my wildest dreams 
when I was in active addiction did I ever imagine this moment. Right? When I was busy filling my veins with heroin, ministry wasn't part of that. Right? It wasn't a part of the brain, but it was always, always known in my heart. I came out of the womb knowing I was a minister. Before I even had language, <laughs> rumor has it, because before I even had memory, right? <clears throat> I was raised in the church, several different churches. But rumor has it, we go to church, we come home, and pre-verbal, I would line up all the stuffed animals when we got home and preach whatever I thought I heard on Sunday morning. And that continued throughout my childhood. I do have memories of it when I was five, six, and seven, but apparently it happened when it was just like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? something inside of me knew who I was before I was in this form. And that that doesn't change. But what does change is the form and the function of that. Before I came here, I didn't even know Sierra Center existed, quite honestly. Didn't even know Grass Valley existed. <laughs> and, and I lived right down the hill in Santa Rosa, and I had no idea Grass Valley was here. Um, certainly didn't know that the technology, the camera switching technology that all of the entertainment industry uses was created here. Who knew? Right? But it was. We use it on our live stream. That's how Juanita can just hit one or two and change the cameras. Thank you, Grass Valley Group. <laughs> they created that. This is a long, convoluted way to get to maybe the most difficult. You know, they say that Mother's Day and tithing are the most difficult talks you ever give. <laughs> um, I think they're inaccurate. <laughs> um, when something, and, and I want to use this to give you a gift to take with you. When something is alive in you, that is bigger than you. That scares the jabbers out of the human you. Trust it. Now I know your brain just said, what did he say? <laughs> because the brain will argue. It will give you a litany of reasons. Evidence based reasons from the past. About why it can't be in the now or in the future. It will tell you that. That's its job. And sometimes that's actually a good thing, right? We've watched on the news people who didn't listen to that brilliant repository of information who chose to drive through water and several of them have drowned. So sometimes that information from the past is a good thing. And sometimes it just needs to be a thing that we acknowledge and then we move beyond it. It's interesting, we've got more people in this room this morning than we've had in quite some time. And I'm sitting over here knowing what is alive in me to say this morning. And for a moment, I needed a God outside of myself so I could say, really, really? Now? Really? And right behind it came, it ain't about that. It ain't about what's in the room. It's about what's in you. And I know that. And I want you to know that. Um, I have fought with myself at different levels for a while now. And it's not about I want to be really judicious and, and, as Don Miguel Ruiz says, impeccable with the words that I use. 
It's not about something better. It's not about something worse. It's not about something more. It's not about something less. It's about something different. There's something in me that is birthing itself, and I wish I could tell you exactly what it is, but I don't know. And that's the scary part in this human realm. And the argument <laughs> with my beloved brain has been intense. Um, and spiritually, what I know the most correct thing to do is to walk my talk. Um, it would be so easy to ignore everything going on in me. So easy. That would be the simple thing. But what I know is that I am complete here at Sierra Center. And I don't want that to be what I know. I don't. And yet it is. Um, <laughs> my brain has been doing the, um, excuse me, for 64 years, it, it's been pretty clear that it's a good idea to have another job before you let go of the one you have. Um, have you looked at your bank account, dude? Hello. Um, because that's the scary part, because I, I don't have a definite anything. Um, <laughs> and yet, spiritually, I am a definite everything. And that's the space that I'm challenging my own humanity to step into. I will be here actively 100% engaged, just like I always have through the end of February. Um, those of you that are in the room that are new, I'm not this center. Whatever called you here this morning was here before I got here. As the minister, it'll be here when I'm gone. I'm not this center. This center is a divine idea in the mind of the infinite. And that's what you came here for. So please come back for more of that. Um, everybody that has ever been here. I do want to share this with you. I invite you to envision Sierra Center. As bigger than you've ever imagined it. Not bigger in size, not bigger in people, but bigger in what it is as a spiritual community. That perhaps spiritual community can be a safe harbor. That the light of this community can actually function like a lighthouse. And so vessels that are in tumultuous waters can spot a safe harbor where they can come in and dock, where they can get healed, where they can get nourishment, where they can get companionship, where they can grow themselves, where their ship can be refurbished. And when they're ready to go back out to sea, they go back out to sea. That we allow spiritual community to be beyond a country club mentality, that we let it be beyond a social club, and that that door is the portal by which the divine comes and goes and loves itself. And anybody and everybody that walks through that door is met with the heart of the infinite that beats within you. No matter what they look like, no matter what they smell like, no matter how much money they have or don't have, that this community empowers itself to see the divine coming through that door over and over again, individualized. And when people walk out the door, you know that the divine is moving on to its next greatest expression, wherever that is, even on a Sunday morning. Every one of you walked in here, and every one of us will walk out of here different. 
That's the beauty of every moment. None of us is exactly the same any two moments. I invite you to embrace that, to celebrate that, to allow yourself to be conscious of that, to be aware of that, to let every moment in life manifest. What does manifest mean? To reveal, to reveal the truth of you moment by moment by moment. And if that happens, that door won't be big enough. And this center won't be big enough. Let that happen. Don't make it happen. Don't force it. Let it happen. And so we are coming up on our annual membership meeting. And if you've been on the fence about your membership, now's the time to get off the fence. If you've been on the fence about leadership, now's the time to get off the fence. If you want to be a part of where this goes, get off the shore and get in the boat. Right? It's that whole story, and I'll close with this. This just popped into my mind. <clears throat> it's an aerial circus guy doing a routine where he has a wheelbarrow and a tightrope. And he's getting ready to walk his wheelbarrow across the tightrope, and, and then he stops and he turns around to the audience and he says, who believes I can do this? Who believes I can successfully take this wheelbarrow across this tightrope? And people raise their hands and clap for him and he's okay he gets his nerve up and he starts off and then he stops and he says who really believes I'm gonna do this and do it successfully one person raised their hand and he started back and he, and he turned back around and he said you really believe that and the person said yeah and he said get in the wheelbarrow If you really believe it, get in the wheelbarrow. Get out of the audience. Get in the wheelbarrow. This is your center. Own it. Let's take this into prayer. <sighs> there is only one. Magnificent. One allness that speaks to its creation in a voice that it recognizes, undeniably recognizes, exquisitely individualized to reveal the truth of being that each came here to be. And so I speak my words celebrating that. Celebrating the dance between the human and the spiritual. Embracing the whole messy journey. And knowing that it is all love. All consciousness. All the time. And so I know that that is the activity of this center. I know that is the activity of every one in this center. I know that is the activity of Grass Valley, of Nevada City, of Nevada County, because it is the activity of humanity itself, the infinite revealing itself in, through, and as its creation. <laughs> I feel that resonance within every fiber of my being, and so I can celebrate. I can let it go with an amazing hallelujah and know in every fiber of my being that all is well, always has been, is now, can only ever be. All is well. And I invite you 
to affirm this, to claim it, to own it as your own, as we say together. And so it is.